can't answer that question. question. Again, I, I can't answer that question. I think that I've had discussions with, with uh, Bradley Wright about his testimony. I think that he will testify regardless. That's my opinion, but I, I don't have any. I don't have any uh, proof of that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, deposition. Uh, I'd like to know if the Pegasus suit and any liens against our property yeah. associated with that suit could be creating problems for people in here trying to attain, uh, obtain reverse mortgage. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, that those are some of the people that I talked about earlier, where they actually had their uh, brokers call my office and I talked to them. In some instances, I have been successful in pushing through a reverse mortgage uh, or making the uh, underwriters feel comfortable enough with the lawsuit and the amount of money you all set aside and the status of the lawsuit to actually underwrite the reverse regardless. Uh, there have been a couple of where I haven't been successful in doing that. I mean, it all depends on who you're going to be dealing with. Uh, you know, and again, if you have somebody who wants to do that, you can have them call my office. I will provide what I can, what I what is called an opinion letter as to what I think this case means and what the ultimate liability is going to be and where it's going to lie. And so that, that will help you at least. It's it's not as good as a as a title insurance. But don't forget that even though their their claim clean on it is is a large amount, it's uh it's broken down into each individual unit uh, owner so that the real lien on your individual units is probably around eleven hundred dollars, maybe even a little. Less. I'm not sure what the exact number is. You know, well, would be percentage as as, as, per, as right. per square as foot. As as the larger you, your just unit, just the just average is about. Hold on a second, because I just had that guy. In all your other cases, you know that you can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Why you're doing certain things, like. No, I'm not. I, I represent associations. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean associations are made up of groups of people that all have their own minds and they all have their own thoughts, and so this, this does happen. Well, all right. you know, if you ask the computer to protect it, I mean, do they sit there and question you as to your motives? No, typically not. But that's what. But, but hey, listen, okay. I'm not saying that no, nobody has to. This is really, that's why this is a twofold issue. Right. There's an issue of, you know, me securing what I believe is data in the best interest, whether or not it works. You know, and then there's the, there's another issue, which is about the firing of this individual. Which really, I'm telling you, I don't, I'm not weighing in on that issue. You know, that that issue is something that you you have to have discussion amongst the association and your board of directors, you know, whoever you know, y'all want to do that with. But it, it is not me. I'm not the appropriate person to have that conversation with. And in fact, uh, on several instances, I have referred uh, the association and Mr. Seidler to the association's attorney. When I think you're talking about business, that really is a, the association attorney's business. I'm, I'm a, a litigator. I litigate construction cases. You know, I know about leaky roofs and not about employment issues so much. A couple of things. Yeah. I came to this meeting, and I think everybody else, because the agenda did say one of the issues to be touched upon was Brian's sure. uh, fire. Right. And it also said that you requested this meeting. Okay, in the memo, it said that okay. you requested it. Now you're saying that Clyde requested it. But in any case, if Brad works or does not work for us, if he's a key witness and he's subpoenaed, he has to show up, correct? Absolutely. Okay. That's what I, that's that's what I just We don't have to keep Brad, because that was said in one of the meetings, we have to keep him because he's one of the key witnesses. We don't have to. If we want to fire him or not, it doesn't affect the lawsuit. I can tell you that our preparation for the final arbitration hearing is not complete yet. But then I've also had a conversation with Mr. Pikes regarding what I think we need to do to get that completed. It was one of the reasons why I wanted Brad's computer in my office so that I could sit down with Brad and complete the work that we need to do in order to be completely ready for the arbitration. Okay, but okay. Okay. any weakness in any uh, lawsuit, if the person is subpoenaed, they have to be in court for that day. Absolutely, but I will tell you that there's, there's, you know, the reality of the situation is that when you subpoena a witness and you force them to come into court versus yeah. someone just voluntarily coming into court, it's, it's, those are two different witnesses. Okay. Just to say no. All right. And the other question is for Clyde. Clyde, if um, you requested the meeting for him to come, first of all, why did you request him to come here for free and have this meeting? Number one and number two. If you did, the, I don't know who put the memo on the signs, but it says there that he requested this meeting and, and Mark would be here, the treasurer. So Mark, will be, Mark will be here. 
Mark the treasurer has previous engagements every Tuesday and Thursday for religious meetings. Nine o'clock is when he leaves the meeting. Where he is, he'll be here within ten minutes. If at some time the meeting ends in between, maybe we can all grab a coffee and a cake and come back when Mark comes. But he will be here to explain. And, and why did you request this meeting and why you put it was, it was a request that was coordinated between all of us. We all went back to Joe. We told him a little bit about what happened at the other meeting. And he said that he would like to have the opportunity to do that. And I said, should we arrange a town hall meeting for you to be here? We all agreed. Is that correct, Joe? That's correct. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't request a town hall meeting, but I told him that I'd be more than happy to come and answer questions because, again, I wasn't, I wasn't here, so I was told that there were a lot of questions about the computers and why the computers were taken. And, and I can tell you that they were only taken to the tech You know, that's, that's really what I'm trying to tell you. And then what happens after that is what happens after that. You know, I, I, I can tell you that it was probably the third instance that I, I talked uh, directly to Mr. Sadler. And one of the reasons why it caused me a little bit of pause and concern about him not seeking information directly from me regarding this case. I told him that my discussions regarding this case will be directed to the board of directors and that the property manager really shouldn't be asking me uh, questions about this case because he has in the past asked me questions about this case. That if, if, and, and he said it was at the request of the board of directors. I said, even if that's so, please just have the board of directors contact me directly. I do not want to talk about this case directly with you. I don't know why, you know, that Brian was, was asking me about the case. And I, and I really don't care. Yes. Question. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Brad was hired on a temporary basis until the place was basically finished or almost finished. So if he has to go to court, I mean, the property is uh, in good hands now. We have a good construction uh, uh, committee. Uh, why is anybody afraid of Brad? I mean, this is not a permanent job for him. I mean, he was only hired temporarily. Yeah, so, I mean, again, I mean, he's here already for sure. so many years, a year and a half or whatever it is, he's made an exorbitant amount of money because of signing his paychecks. I don't know who signed his hourly paychecks. Uh, so, I mean, he, he got paid well. So, therefore, his job is finished here. His job is finished, and he should not be, nobody should be afraid the fact that he has to go to court to testify for us. And I, I, don't, I don't think that's what I tried to say earlier is that in my conversation with him, and I cannot be, uh, you know, I can't guarantee what Mr. Wright will do, but when my conversations with him are leading to me that he'll just come and testify. I mean, I, it sounds like you've got a gun to your head. It's not true. Basically, and I can tell you, I've had this discussion with the board, and where Brad has taken uh, an invoice, packeted it, and highlighted it, and that information was then in turn used by our expert witness. From what I understand, and I don't, I don't know what it's, I don't know what he's getting paid, but I, I have a feeling it's a lot less than what our expert witness is charging the association. So he's been trying to package information for the expert witness to make the expert witness's hours less on the job. I don't know. Uh, I haven't done an evaluation, but I can tell you the expert witness is like three hundred dollars an hour. So, uh, whatever time you can save is a savings to the association. How much is the expert witness? Uh, three hundred dollars an hour. Three hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. And you said that Brad is helping the expert witness, and anything Brad does. Yeah, this, this is a very big case. You know, you guys. I think you should expect that I would go out and get one of the best experts I can. One of the, the guys that I got is actually. Uh, Xactimate's uh, field guide for South Florida. Xactimate was the software program that you guys, that was this job was bid up by Pegasus. And he immediately looked at the Xactimate uh, bidding package and saw problems with it. So, you know, I, I tried to find the most qualified person that I could to do the work as an expert witness. In fact, he's from Pensacola. He's not, you know, I had to go, I had to go get him. Counselor. Yeah. In your, uh, your opinion, it is Pegasus is either criminal? Uh, well, 
I mean, that's, that's a, I mean, I guess that's a civil thing going on here, but it's sure. actions criminal. And has there been any kind of collusion I can't, okay. coming up between them and the people who hired him at the time? I have no, I have no evidence of collusion. Well, there's been, uh, some emails that between Hector and Tom Darrington. But there's no evidence. There's no evidence. Okay. But do you think that's really criminal behavior? Uh, it's possible. I think that it's in our best interest to pursue the civil matter thoroughly before you uh, delve into whether or not there was any criminal activity because that would probably end Pegasus as a company. And therefore end your right to get money from them. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> first, 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 first. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything I can to try to protect whatever money we can get at the end of the case from Pegasus. April 1st is the first day of our arbitration. Okay. It's a two week arbitration. After the arbitration, the panel will probably caucus. It's a three member panel. They'll, uh, they'll try to get together with their, their judgment in this case. It could be as soon as a week after, it could be uh, 30 days after. At that point, we've got to take that judgment and uh, bring it to the court and have it turned into a final judgment, an executable final judgment. Uh, hopefully by then people will be offering settlement funds to us, and uh, so we're probably talking, you know, end of spring, summer, getting some kind of movement as far as money is concerned regarding this case. Counselor, on that, they could string it out. You know, there's also proviso that you know they could string it out. On that point, how many times can Pegasus fire their attorneys to keep out of arbitration? It was very close to them not getting a continuance this time. We actually. Uh, fought the continuance uh, with our own motion, basically, you know, describing the hardships for the individuals like the, the man who talked about his reverse mortgage and, and what this lien does to the people that live here and how it makes it more difficult to sell the property. I think there are real irreparable harms uh, being placed on this property by the lien being There is a point where they're establishing a pattern of behavior where the judge is going to say, well, I, don't, can't keep I can't promise you that I do not believe that this panel would allow another continuance Thank you. from the one that they got. Yes, sir. Are, are you aware that, uh, that the, Probably not. That the, <laughs> that the, uh, the money that was put aside for the lien that Pegasus filed in yes. the community was freed up? Uh, I, who who uh, authorized that? I mean, I'm assuming someone first told us we had to do it so that we're able to go borrow against the property. Then who told us that we could spend that money? I have no idea. I can tell you that my legal opinion was read to the board that there was no legal requirement for you to set aside the money. Even in the beginning when they set aside the money? It's nice to set it aside. There's no legal requirement to set it aside. So they put it aside. We were told, to my understanding, we were told that it was a requirement in order for the bank it was, to... It was used on several occasions to help people get these mortgages or refinance, and where I told, well, my opinion letter basically said the money is set aside in the amount of relief. Jerry, the original thing that was done there, we looked at looking into a bond, if I recall, because we're going back a while now, and the bond for the association to bond everything was very, very expensive. What we did try to do as a board was to make it as easy as possible. The only way we could send a letter if we didn't have a bond, which was, I mean, an exorbitant amount of money to, to put out for the association, uh, was to go this route. And I believe at the time uh, we had had sufficient funds to do that, and those monies were set aside so that those people, unit owners that wanted to sell or buy or whatever, they, we could, you know, uh, I believe our other firm, Katzman and Cora, mm -hmm. drew up the paperwork that you know, saying that we had the money set aside. The bank also was very helpful in the fact that they just left the money in there. They didn't charge us any interest or anything on it. We, it was like it was just never used. It just sat in there. So that was the best way to go for the unit owners at the time. And it was the cheapest way to go for the association. And it why, why did we change that? Because I think that what was asked of me at the time that I rendered my opinion, and, and, you know, and I was involved in the actual decision whether or not to release the money, but I was asked whether or not there was a legal requirement for us to have the money set aside. Um, and I said no. And I think that the reason probably that the board wanted to free up some of the money is because of the continuance. Because we would have had this matter resolved had it not been for the fact that they were enabled, they were they were able to get a continuance. Uh, so it stretched out the amount of time. 
you know, that the, this money is being set aside. But now we're, we're at risk because we don't have a bond. And we There's don't no have bond. any money put aside for the lien. So we're at risk. And Either way, I think that if you're talking about continuing to do the construction efforts that it would take to finish the construction here, or piecemealing out people's uh, portion of this lien every time they close, you would be giving up that money either through a new special assessment or by, by uh, having a board action to take that money that you set aside and bring it back into the community for use. So if you had to continue the construction here, you either have to assess everyone to continue construction or bring the money that you had set aside back into the fold and use that money to continue construction. I understand that, but in the early stage, it was decided not to put out money for the bond and to hold the money. And now that we've run out of money and are looking at another assessment, mm -hmm. they're saying, oh, this money is here. Why don't we spend it? So to me, that's two different ways of looking at the same thing. Because we didn't buy every bond right. to cover it. Right. So we didn't have to make a big deal about this in the beginning if we're taking the money in the end because we're now at risk just as we mm -hmm. were in the beginning. So we're just taking money because it's laying there. I'm just, I'm well, you, no problem. I'm right. happy to use it. Right. Because right. I'm happy to use it. But I just want to point out. Well, I mean, I, th I think the only difference would be that at the point in time you had the money to set aside, and at some point in time you no longer have that money. You either have to all contribute new money, right. or use the old money. And we're still going to have to do that anyway. Right. Either way you look at it, it's I think it's six half dozen. And then that's kind of like why my legal opinion was basically it doesn't really matter if you have the money set aside, if you specially assess people to finish the construction today, or if you specially assess them if you happen to lose this case and you have to come up with the money later on down the road, it's the same thing. It's, so why, why do the assessment now? The goal is to win the case, and that never becomes an issue. Okay. I, I don't know the exact figure. The board probably knows. Nine hundred thousand. Nine hundred thousand. Mere pins, right? That's what I'm charging you for tonight. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You've been very patient, by the way. First, we've heard that there is a lien on our property. Then it came some meeting. I cannot recall exactly what date it was, but it was somewhere. November or December, when our board told us that we don't have any more lien on our property. That's not true. That's, and that's not true. I was present here. That's not true. The board never said we didn't have a lien. We never said that. the question about the lien. But we never said there was not a lien on the property. Any more in question. Ask anybody here. They never said that. They never said that. So, okay. okay. But that's right, because I changed the okay, question. So, maybe I was wrong. But now, uh, do we all have the lien on our properties? Yes. Your, your portion of whatever you owe to this association, everyone's units comprise what's called the common area maintenance fees, whatever. So your proportionate share of that is your proportionate share of this lien. It's just like another expense of a property. Okay, uh, again, I, I'm pretty sure that I've heard that there is a lien on certain buildings, not to everybody's property. Okay, even that, I accept because it is straight from your explanation. Well, Whatever I, mean, I heard before, it's not the first thing that I, I mean, that we hear something that is not true. Uh, but anyway, tell me, how Listen, much I'm not infallible, just so you know. I mean. Sorry? <laughs> I do make mistakes, but it's my belief. It's no, my no, no, it's not you. I'm, I'm saying if you tell me that, I don't have a reason not to believe it. But my question, next question is, do you expect to win this case uh, for Pegasus? Uh, I mean, against Pegasus. I expect to win. Okay. Do you expect to win? How realistically is? I expect to win. Every case. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, and then it doesn't have to. Well, but we know. No, that it doesn't have. To. Correct. <laughs> okay. But uh, okay, then then go back to your uh, uh, that you told me that you will win. How sure you are that you will? Win. Oh, okay, I can't give you a percentage. Okay. I that okay. That's very nice. Wait. 
I can tell you that there was no Shut up. What we are talking about, I mean, what is the amount of money that we expect as... And again, we're still totaling the amount because damages are still being calculated and we're still trying to offset whatever. I think that you just got a new uh, tranche of money from your insurance company recently. Yeah. Yeah, so all of... I mean, this is kind of like a moving target because more money just came in uh, from the insurance company. And, and there are still units who are still fighting over how much money they're supposed to receive from the insurance company versus how much they actually pay. I can tell you that our uh, goal is to re recover whatever money the insurance company doesn't cover. Uh, so I, I don't know what the, what the exact amount is, but it's in the millions of dollars. One, three. Three, closer to three. Three plus. Mm -hmm. That we can. But then, again, I have not, I have not seen what the latest insurance company is. Yeah. Where would that money go if we won? Uh, it would go to the association. Meaning what? Would it pay off assessments? Well, that, would be, that, that would be. Uh, that would be. I guess to the board of directors. Okay. That, that's scary. Yeah. That's I have no idea. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
to do the type of work uh, in the scope of work that they had is, is, is not improper. I mean, we're going to challenge that there are some buildings that they never stepped on, but that they're claiming that they worked on, which is a different issue. Yes, sir. You can just mention like, the Jeep, I'm sorry. Just one that's my Jeep. Oh, that's your Jeep? Is it a four-door green Jeep? Uh, Sahara? Yes. Yeah, it's in my spot as much as I respect it. I have a new rule, I got a tow. Is it towed? No. No, it's in my spot. You have to move with me, I'll put it in the front, I can care less. Let's go with me. Just stay. You can move it. Thank you. Put me live. He's he's can wait. With the lien on the, on the property, uh, when you go to sell and you want to close, the title company with a clouded title. Yeah. Want, how do you help them? Uh, talk them through it. What do they want? Do they, can they put? The Initially, I was using the set aside money as part of my argument. Uh, now I'm giving an opinion letter as to what I think the strength of our case is versus the lien claim. And I'm it doesn't always work. Some people will underwrite the loan based on the fact that I believe that we have a strong case against this lien that I think has some infirmities, including the ones that we just discussed. Uh, often the bank was very comfortable writing when we had the money set aside. Uh, but, but now, it's, again, it's different for every lender. Right. So you, so you ask for a portion that your unit would be liable for in the event of a loss of the case. Right. And, I, and in fact, uh, I think that the last discussion with the board was, in a case-by-case -case basis, would you be willing to set aside whatever amount of money that that fortunate mean is for that one property? And that, I guess that would be like an application to the board saying, I'd like to refi that you reverse mortgage. My portion of this lien is, let's call it $1,000 for lack of knowing what it is. And can the board set that portion of it aside? So like for the special assessment that would get paid off in closing, that portion? Well, it would go into a trust to say, if we lost, title at company. least that property's portion is, is locked away into a, for the title as I'll go and say, a lock escrow. box. Would the title company be holding that escrow at closing? Uh, that's possible. I mean, you, any 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 one of you individually has the ability to do that. Uh, typically, I find that people that are trying to refi or do a reverse mortgage don't really have the luxury of putting a thousand dollars aside. That's, that's part of the problem. For the, for the sale, that's the regular sales sale. the same way. You can lock, you can you can have that as part of an escrowed amount of money until this is resolved. And we're really not talking about that much longer now. I mean, if you have if you're not under contract yet, it would probably be about the same time that it would take you to get the contract. You know, to that we would be hopefully resolved with this issue. When? When do you think? Well, hopefully we'll be talking about late spring, early summer. We're done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, in answer to Joe's question, why was all the property clean? You know, when in fact they didn't work on most of the property. Is it because there were contracts that were signed that did say that? Yes, ma'am. So that is the reason why. The, the whole property was right, well, you, you entered into a contract with them that basically repaired all of Bloomer's damage.